A quorum is present in the assembly. We ask our guests and visitors in the rear of the chamber and in the gallery to please stand for the prayer. The day's prayer will be offered by our guest chaplain, Assemblywoman Brown. Assemblywoman Brown. Thank you. As elected representatives of the people, we humbly ask you to make us an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, help us so love. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. Grant us, Lord, the ability, courage, and wisdom to attain all these objectives for the people of this great state. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Brown. We ask our guests and visitors to remain standing and join us for the flag salute. Please join Assemblywoman Olson as she leads us in the pledge, Ms. Olson. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank you. You may be seated. Reading of the previous day's journal. Assembly Chamber, Sacramento, Wednesday, May 25th, 2016. The assembly met at 7 a.m. Honorable Brian Daly, Assembly Member, First District, presiding. Chief Clerk E. Dalton Wilson at the desk. Reading Clerk Kathleen M. Lewis, reading. The following are placed upon the morning roll Mr. call. Mr. Calderon moves and Ms. Waldron seconds that the reading of the previous day's journal will be dispensed with. Presentations of petitions, there are none. Introduction or reference of bills will be deferred. Reports of committees will be deemed read and amendments deemed adopted. Messages from the governor, there are none. Messages from the Senate, there are none. Motions and resolutions, the absences for the day, there are no absences today. Mr. Calderon, you are recognized for your procedural motion, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I request unanimous consent to suspend Assembly Rule 118 and allow Assemblymember Gordon to have guests and photographers on the floor today. Without objection, the request is granted. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At the request of the author, I am giving a one-day notice of intent to remove file item A17, SB 308, Wykowski, from the inactive file. The clerk will note. Is there any objection to granting Mr. Gatto unanimous consent for reconsideration on file item 198, that's AB 2748? Seeing and hearing none, reconsideration is granted. Members, members, we have special guests with us in the assembly today. If we could have your attention, members. Members, on behalf of assembly member Medina, I would like to welcome the Youth Advisory Committee from his 61st Assembly District joining us in the gallery today. Let's welcome them to the Assembly. And members, on behalf of Assembly Member Mark Levine, I would like to welcome 36 visitors from the Neil Cummins 
Elementary School in Corda Madeira. They are also in the gallery. Let's welcome them to the assembly today. And finally, members, on behalf of Assembly Member Rich Gordon, we would like to welcome the Honorable Otto Lee, former mayor and city council member for the city of Sunnyvale, and his colleague, Ms. Melody Maysenai, also joining us in the assembly today. Let's welcome them. Second reading, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1567, 1577, 1644, 1649, 1654, 1711, 1712, 1730, 1731, 1741, 1783, 1807, 1823, 1838, 1844, 1846, 1858, 1863, 1904, 1907, 1914, 1930, 1952, 1972, 1997, 2017, 2018, 2029, 2048, 2054, 2057, 2069, 2090, 2091, 2099, 2122, 2124, 2137, 2150, 2164, 2175, 2206, 2216, 2223, 2249, 2260, 2270, 2285, 2290, 2311, 2324, 2329, 2331, 2334, 2348, 2350, 2358, 2411, 2759, 2809, 2812, 2817, 2828, 2862, 2883, 2892, 2900, 2440, 2476, 2485, 2494, 2499, 2506, 2515, 2548, 2552, 2569, 2581, 2589, 2617, 2656, 2687, 2715, Assembly Constitutional Amendment 11, Assembly Bill 2189, 2199, 2225, 2246, 2310, 2363, 2364, 2377, 2516, 2640, 2652, 2800, 2835, 2868, 2125 with amendments, 2133 with amendments, 2139 with amendments, 2140 with amendments, 2183 with amendments, 2197 with amendments, 2222 with amendments, 2243 with amendments, 2251 with amendments, 2282 with amendments, 2298 with amendments, 2308 with amendments, 2322 with amendments, 2386 with amendments, 2399 with amendments, 2405 with amendments, 2424 with amendments, 2425 with amendments, 2428 with amendments, 2439 with amendments, 2441 with amendments, 2454 with amendments, 2460 with amendments, 2467 with amendments, 2480 with amendments, 2493 with amendments, 2523 with amendments, 2524 with amendments, 2536 with amendments, 2586 with amendments, 2588 with amendments, 2616 with amendments, 2629 with amendments, 2678 with amendments, 2722 with amendments, 2730 with amendments, 2777 with amendments. 2818 with amendments, 2821 with amendments, 2822 with amendments, 2844 with amendments, 2873 with amendments, 2895 with amendments, 1550 with amendments, 1561 with amendments, 1583 with amendments, 1585 with amendments, 1653 with amendments, 1664 with amendments, 1673 with amendments, 1674 with amendments, 1676 with amendments, 1677 with amendments, 1695 with amendments, 1696 with amendments. 1704 with amendments, 1721 with amendments, 726 with amendments, 1742 with amendments, 1747 with amendments, 1751 with amendments, 1762 with amendments, 1763 with amendments, 1770 with amendments, 1778 with amendments, 1792 with amendments, 1795 with amendments, 1878 with amendments, 1890 with amendments, 1965 with amendments, 1978 with amendments, 1995 with amendments, 2000 with amendments, 2004 with amendments. 2009 with amendments, 2079 with amendments, 2087 with amendments, 2021 with amendments, Assembly Current Resolution 131 with amendments, 
as the label 1575, 1584, 1643, 1690, 1715, 1716, 1738, 1809, 1831, 1899, 1928, 2002, 2013, 2120, 2149, 2153, and 2163 with amendments. All bills will be deemed, deemed read and amendments deemed adopted. Members, we are moving to business on the daily file. We'll begin with file item 200 on assembly third reading. That's AB 2349 by Mr. David Chu. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2349 by Assembly Member David Chu and others, an act relating to assisted reproduction. Mr. David Chu, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, AB 2349 would protect parents of children conceived through surrogacy in our state, including straight and LGBT couples, from having their rights violated outside of our state. California has been a leader in surrogacy law and known as a surrogacy-friendly state, which has caused many couples from other states to come into our state to, carry, to seek Californian surrogates to carry their child. This has caused a shortage of California surrogates, pricing many California parents out of the market, forcing them to look to other less expensive states for surrogates. With many surrogacy contracts crossing state lines, our state has an interest in stating when our courts have jurisdiction to protect the rights of our parents and children. Furthermore, when dealing with litigation in other states less friendly to LGBT individuals, our California same-sex parents need the protections of California court orders. This bill clarifies that when our superior courts can take jurisdiction in parentage cases arising from surrogacy arrangements without a clear statement in the law, questions can arise when courts of other states consider these orders. This bill also clarifies that when the intended parents are using donated eggs or sperm, the names of donors need not be named in surrogacy contracts to protect a donor's privacy. I appreciate the unanimous bipartisan votes for this bill so far and respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. David Chu. Seeing no discussion or debate on this item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote, I-63. No zero measure passes. File item 201 is AB 1802 by Mr. Chavez. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1802 by Assemblymember Chavez and actually the state government. Mr. Chavez, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. AB 1802 adds two members to the California Victim Compensation and Government's Claim Board who would be appointed by the governor. One member would serve as an expert in victims' rights and advocacy. The second member would serve as a physician or psychiatrist or psychologist with expertise in treating or providing services to crime victims. In 2015, the Legislative Analysis Office issued a report on improving state programs for crime victims where they concluded, among other things, that the California Victims' Compensation to Government Claims Board need to be structured in order to better focus on the victims' programs. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. Seeing no discussion or debate on this item, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll tie. The vote I-70, no zero. Measure passes. File items 203, pardon me, 202, 203, and 204 pass and retain. We're moving to file item 205. That's AB 2667. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2667 by Assembly Member Thurmond and others, and actually in the civil rights. Mr. Thurmond, you may open. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. This is a bill about protecting civil rights. It builds on the body of laws that we have passed to protect against discrimination by race or sexual orientation or gender. It specifically protects to ensure that consumers do not have to waive their legal rights to having an attorney and to be forced into arbitration unless they voluntarily choose to do so. It requires that any waiver of legal rights must be voluntarily and knowing, and it prohibits the waiving of those rights from being a requirement a part of any contract. We've had robust discussion about this bill, and we've taken up amendments to make it perfectly clear that the consumer never, ever loses their right to choose arbitration. In order to protect the rights of our 
California citizens, I ask that you support this bill and recognize that it focuses on a very narrow scope of law, explicit just to contracts, and as a result, is not in conflict with any other rulings of law about arbitration. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Thurman. Dr. Weber, you are recognized. Yes, Mr. Speaker and members, I too rise in support of AB 2667, which protects Californians from unwillingly or unknown waivers of their civil rights under California's Unruh Civil Rights Act. Uh, we must acknowledge that critical laws resulting from the civil rights movement are fatally undermined by forced arbitration. Two years ago, this legislature passed my bill, AB 2617, that protected our civil rights under California's two hate crime statutes. That narrow bill was signed into law and has faced, no, has faced zero challenges in court as being preempted. AB 2670, 2667 takes the same narrow approach and applies to the California Unruh Civil Rights Act, which protects consumers from discrimination by a business or housing on account of race, gender, sexual orientation, disability, among other categories. The opposition claims that this bill and my bill and other bills like it would discriminate against arbitration. That argument simply misses the point. Like my bill, this bill simply allows individuals the right to choose which form to pursue their grievances. This legislation is common sense reform that will help to restore our rights to challenge civil rights discrimination by corporations and it needs to be passed into law. I respectfully ask for your I vote for 2667. Thank you, Dr. Weber. Mr. Gallagher, you are recognized. Mr. Speaker, members, uh, I respectfully rise in opposition to this bill, uh, though I understand the motivation to try and protect uh, the civil rights of Californians. These bills, there are several of them that we're going to see, are clearly preempted under federal law. It's very clear that you cannot ban arbitration agreements and contractual agreements. Case after case has shown that. Also, arbitration is proven to provide a more efficient form for the resolution of disputes most cases being resolved within a year or less. Meanwhile, in the federal district court, where these cases would be heard if there was not arbitration, there are 29,312 cases filed in federal court in California in 2014. As of June 2014, 2,132 cases have been pending in court for over three years, and the median time for filing a complaint from filing the complaint to trial is 31 months. Really, only the attorneys win in these class actions. It was pointed out last week on the floor. Here's another example. Lawsuit against Jimmy Johns uh, that I think was decided last year. All the consumers in that case got a $1.40 coupon. The attorneys, $370,000 with fees and costs. We will be pushing these arbitration cases into an already over overburdened federal court, which means delayed justice for consumers and it, and it works out for the class action attorneys, but it doesn't work out for the consumers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher. Mr. Stone, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I think this is a very, very important bill to move forward. I do not, I do not believe that it will suffer the preemption problems as previous attempts to undermine the arbitration rules around contracts, especially employment contracts, are concerned. What it does is it creates an alternate path if someone has violated the Unruh Act versus, uh, against an employee and has actually been discriminated against. The arbitration clause will still stand. Arbitration clause is still usable, and many times that is a very efficient path to move forward. But in certain cases where someone's civil rights have been violated under a California statute, all this bill does is ensure that they have their day in court and allows them to move forward. And I ask for your eye vote. Thank you, Mr. Stone. Seeing no additional discussion or debate on this item, Mr. Thurman, you may close. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, members. I'd like to simply just clarify one thing that was stated on this floor. This bill does not ban arbitration. As a matter of fact, I am a fan of arbitration, and I think arbitration is a reasonable option for anyone, any consumer, to explore and to consider. This bill simply says that if someone chooses to use arbitration, they should have done so voluntarily, and it should not have been a condition of the contract. Again, there is nothing about this bill that stands in the way of any person's ability to use arbitration. Any person 
can choose arbitration at any time, and we amended this bill to explicitly reflect that. Additionally, this bill will not run afoul of any federal rulings because this bill deals with a very narrow subset of contracting, similar to the bill that you heard my colleague from San Diego talk about that she passed. It's a very narrow subset of contracting. It simply says that you should never have to give up your rights to have your harm remedied if you've experienced some form of discrimination. Um, on behalf of the rights of Californians, I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Thurman. With that, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. 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 Mr. Thurman moves the call. Moving to file item 206. That is AB 2878. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2878 by the Committee on Judiciary and actually to the State Bar. Mr. Stone, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. This is the annual State Bar dues bill, and what it does this year is it keeps the bar dues owed by members the same as it has in the past couple of years, but it also addresses a few other significant issues that you have been broiling at the state level. For example, it eliminates the bar's ability to limit the legislature's ability to raise fees or, or adjust fees in the future. It addresses the makeup of the bar of trustees by eliminating the positions that are elected by the attorneys, thereby starting to move the governance of the bar away from a supermajority of attorneys on the bar. It requires a study on the client security fund, which has been a major issue in getting money out to aggrieved parties who are supposed to be paid in a timely manner under the bill or under the, um, the rules of the bar, but really haven't been, as well as it, uh, it cleans up some of the transparency provisions that this body put in last year. This is an annual bill. This is required in order to be able to allow the bar to set the bar dues moving forward for attorneys, and I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Stone. Mr. Ch Mr. Mr. Wagner, we'll start with you. You are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and regrettably, I have to rise in opposition to this bill. I did support it in the Judiciary Committee, as did all of the Republicans, and I think it's incumbent upon us to explain what has changed. 
And to do that, let me just take a moment to take you back to a very unusual committee hearing where every member, every single member spoke out, spoke forcefully, and spoke in some detail about the failings and shortcomings that we've seen over the last several years with management of the bar. Now, we had bar leadership there promising to address these issues, and I take them at their word, and I have subsequently met with them and believe that there are efforts being made to address the problems. However, it's my concern that those efforts are not going far enough, at least as specified in this legislation. Let me be clear, I mean absolutely no criticism of the committee chairman who has done absolutely fantastic work to get us where this bill is. But I think we need to go farther, and I think this is our one and only chance, certainly in this fiscal cycle, and perhaps for quite some time if we give a pass today, this is our one and only chance to put the teeth into the bill that need to be put into it to, in fact, fix the Bar Association. As things stand, we run serious problems of antitrust violations with our state bar as it's currently operated. And, of course, we've seen problems that have been outlined by the author in presenting this bill that we're trying to address but aren't going far enough. So, despite my original support for this bill as a way to move it forward and see the changes that need to be made put into it, I urge my colleagues, especially on my side of the aisle, to say, thank you, Mr. Chairman, but this hasn't gone far enough. We need to see further action, and we would like further negotiations on this bill. Because as it stands, this does not do what the entire committee, in a bipartisan manner, said absolutely needs to be done. I urge a no vote. Maybe sometime later this week, if we can get some real changes, we can get this off the floor. But today, this bill does not satisfy the bipartisan concerns articulated by the entire committee. And I urge a no vote. Mr. David Chu, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, typically for tough issues out of the Judiciary Committee, our colleagues on the other side of the aisle and I are on opposite sides. But for this issue and this vote, I stand firmly with our colleague from Irvine to ask for your no vote. For those of you who are not on the Judiciary Committee, when this item was considered, it was a remarkable hearing. Every member of the committee, all 10 of us, agreed that real reform was necessary. We asked for amendments to be adopted to do exactly that. Unfortunately, these amendments are not in this bill. Let me just take a few moments to describe the mind-boggling issues that have convinced me that the State Bar is the Titanic, and if we don't turn it around, we'll only have ourselves to blame. We had Filegate. During this past year, we learned that the Bar has ignored hundreds of complaints of the unlawful practice of law, many of which are from immigrants victimized by individuals planning to be lawyers, literally hundreds of files of cases sitting in a drawer while Californians were being defrauded. There was Travelgate. After the previous executive director was filed, fired, which ushered a series of lawsuits, we learned that state bar executives were traveling around the world on lavish trips on travel slush funds when they should have been looking through their drawers. Travel expenses to El Salvador, Mexico, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Peru, Mongolia. There was Buildinggate. From one audit, we learned that the bar spent $77 million on the purchase of a building in Los Angeles that our legislature had only approved $10 million for, rather than investing this money in improving its attorney discipline system. Astonishingly, after the first audit, the San Francisco bar decided without input or approval from this legislature to take a $10 million loan on its San Francisco building. I'm only describing the tip of the iceberg. In an audit last year, our state auditor said that the state bar had failed to place the protection of the public as its highest priority, the principal responsibility of the bar. The audit uncovered not only excessive backlog of cases of attorneys behaving badly, but to reduce the backlog, some attorneys who probably should have been disbarred received light punishments and are still practicing law. If it's not already obvious, why do we need to act now? 
When I graduated from law school some 20 years ago, there was a commission that issued a report about the bar which described the very issues that we have in front of us today. Mr. Speaker, permission to read? Without objection. Today, several current bar trustees have documented the, and I quote, the long history of cyclical crisis, reform, neglect, and renewed crisis. A show of effort at change is made. The attention of the press, bar, and public turn elsewhere. The bar slides back into mismanagement, failure to protect Californians, and general dysfunction. I ask that we reject the bill today so that the state bar can go back to work, and I hope we have an opportunity to vote on a bill that reflects real reform. I respectfully ask for your no vote. Ms. Gonzalez, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise, unfortunately, to also ask for a no vote on this bill. I'm a proud member of the California State Bar and pay my dues a little begrudgingly every year. But as an attorney, and more importantly, as a legislator, I assume the bar is doing its job. In the last few years, we passed two bills out of this legislature that got signed by the governor that directed the bar to accept phone calls and complaints of uh, individuals who are practicing law without a license. In my community, they're called notarios. They often defraud immigrants of honest legal services. We knew that the best place for those complaints to go was to the bar and that they should, in fact, look at those complaints. Instead, over the last year, we've had 300 complaints go into a drawer unanswered. Can you imagine if the medical board had 300 complaints of doctors who are practicing, non-doctors who are practicing medicine? who they never even followed up to see what was going on. But can you imagine more if we had actually passed two bills that told them that they need to do that? It's time that we send a clear message to the state bar that we are not happy with how they've dealt with our directive, that they need to do more, and that there needs to be reform. I respectfully ask for a no vote. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Mr. Holden, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Unfortunately, I must rise today and oppose this measure as currently drafted. I supported this measure in the Judiciary Committee, and I salute the Chair for his efforts to bring consensus to this particular issue. But in the months since we first heard this measure in committee, another auditor's report on the State Bar has been released. The scathing report has shown unnecessary spending by the State Bar, a failure of staff to fully inform bar trustees of critical information before votes and the needless holding of millions of dollars in reserve. All the while, the state bar has failed to pay claims in a timely fashion to Californians harmed by incompetent lawyers. The state bar of California has become unaccountable to the very people it was founded to protect. The Senate currently shows no interest in working with the Assembly and reigning in the State Bar. Therefore, I believe it is best that the bar dues measure stay in the Assembly until it contains true reforms. I reluctantly must oppose this measure, and I ask that you join me. Thank you, Mr. Holden. Mr. Alejo, you are recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker and members. As a member, of the Assembly Judiciary Committee. I must also, unfortunately, rise in opposition to this bill. I want to thank the Chair of the Assembly Judiciary Committee, my colleague from the Monterey Bay, for his leadership on this incredibly important issue. He has shown incredible integrity and a commitment to the public in his efforts to push for reforming the State Bar. But the State Bar has been roiled in turmoil and controversy, especially over the last year. Especially concerning to me, as was mentioned by my other colleagues, it's, it is its inability or unwillingness to prosecute the un unauthorized practice of law, especially towards immigrant communities. Their failure to punish scofflaw notarios undermines our legal and judicial system and our commitment to our friends, our family, our neighbors who are immigrants in this country. However, unfortunately, this bill does not go far enough in pushing the state bar to change how it does business. While I'm incredibly supportive of the author and his efforts to reform the state bar and will do so in the future, I must regretfully stand in opposition to AB 2878 without some assurance that there will eventually be stronger reforms of the state bar contained in this bill. I urge my colleagues to do the same today. Let us send a strong message to the California state bar and reject their bill today. Seeing no additional discussion or debate on the item, Mr. Stone, you may close. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
just to be clear on a few things, this is a bill that, we are, that our committee is working very closely with the Senate on. And in fact, there will be a number of changes that, that come once the bill moves to the, to the Senate. This bill, and even since we heard the bill in committee, there have been a number of changes in here where this was just recently amended to, in fact, include the reduction of the number of, of trustees in order to move the state bar governance away from the antitrust issue that was mentioned. It's not ideal, but it is an attempt to move in that direction. But we have to be working with the Senate on this if we're going to have a solid legislative approach to dealing with the with the bar. Now, the bar is governed by the Supreme Court and the Chief Justice, and the chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee and I have been meeting with the Chief Justice to make sure that we are working with her in how we address the significant reforms that are, in fact, needed. And everyone agrees that the bar needs to be reformed in some significant ways around its governance. That's what this bill is about. You mentioned the Client Security Fund. This bill tries to, is addressing the Client Security Fund in a proactive way. The issue with respect to the unlawful practice of law is a very good issue. And the Senate Judiciary Committee is also, they are committed to help solve that problem to make sure that we don't get in a situation where a number of cases end up in a bottom drawer somewhere and are not being addressed in a timely manner. This is a, a bill that is driving the bar towards its obligation for public protection towards its obligation to the, the people of California in ensuring that bad acting attorneys are held accountable and ensuring that the, the public gets the benefit of what a, an organization like the State Bar is attempting to do. I am hoping there's still enough votes on the floor to be able to move this bill. It's a bill that does need to move forward and I'm still going to ask for your aye votes. Thank you, Ms. Stone. With that, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. <laughs> Mr. Stone, what's your pleasure? New, new territory for me. I'm not even sure. Um, close the roll. Close the roll. We will close the roll and tally like the vote. To notice consideration, please. Eyes eight, nose 44. Measure fails. Mr. Stone notices reconsideration. We are going to pass temporarily on file item 207. We are going to take up file item number 208.